welcome your next Colorado U.S. Senator, Arne McCombie. definition of revolution is not to reform, it's to overthrow. And as many of you have heard, because this, what Jill and I have experienced this weekend is an outraged and informed crowd. Are you outraged? Yeah. You ready for a revolution? Yeah. How many days do we have left before November 8th? Yeah. 75. And who are we fighting against? The global corporate? Oh, yeah. oh, thank God, I love you guys so much. <laughs> We're fighting a war against the global corporate mafia. And as Chris Hedges says, it's corporate totalitarianism made up of the people who are making the most amount of money the oil industry, the finance industry, the military industrial industry, big ag and big pharmacy. Those are where most of the money is being made. So that's where the greatest tussle is. When I spent 10 days with Daniel Ellsberg working on an oral history of why we go to war, he said, how come you get this so easily, Art? I said, have you ever watched The Godfather Part 1 and 2? <laughs> That's what's going on, Mr. Ellsberg. It's a hustle. And I have an MBA from the University of Denver. And I went there when the dean said to me, why should we let you in? I said, because I want to know how the enemy thinks. <laughs> and he laughed. And I said, I'm serious. <laughs> is huge. <laughs> this is really huge. Right. My hands okay? You have big hands? Um, so, uh, so anyhow, those four industries, those five industries, those are the five industries that control our politicians. This is why I'm running against a man called Michael Bennett, a man that I campaigned for, a man that Governor Ritter asked me to campaign for when I was wrapping up my second term as an Eagle County Commissioner. I was young then, I was about 48. <laughs> I, I had two young children, Maya and Mateo, they're now 10 and 11 years old going into fourth and sixth grade. I was a soldier for both Andrew Romanoff and for Michael Bennett and for Governor Ritter and for Ken Salazar. And when, when, well, hold on a second, because you haven't walked in their shoes, all right? You don't know what it's like to stand in a U.S. Senate seat and have a revolving door of Italian suits walking in for five hours every day telling you how they want you to vote. And you having to raise $14 million and then bringing in $14 million of dark money and then the Republicans are doing the same thing so that you could run a game, a hustle, that people think is called a two-party system between the Democrats and the Republicans, but we know what the two-party system is. There's a two-party system called the inside party and the what? Outside party. That's right. That's the two-party system. 
And Jill and I are here to represent the third choice. The third choice. We're here to represent you. So let's do a little exercise, all right? You guys ready to get wild? Do you want the Fuego speech? Or do you want the, hi, how are you? Would you like to sit down and we can talk about this? All right, the Fuego speeches, if there is 75 days left to make history and get Jill Stein 600,000 votes and put the Green Party on the map and probably the smartest policy person I've ever met working as hard as we can is getting on a plane tomorrow and going to LA and then who knows where she's going next and then somewhere next. We have to work a thousand people on the streets getting a thousand people to get a hundred thousand votes. Getting a thousand people to get a thousand people to vote is a hundred thousand votes in a state that has 1.4 million unaffiliated 50% are under the age of 40, so they're very persuadable. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> hey, man. I'm just eating pizza listening to history class. Who should I vote for? Vote for Jill. Vote for Jill. Um, so, that, that, that's a Spicoli reference. Um, then you've got the Bernie Kratz. Do we have any Bernie Kratz in the house? Stand up. Vicky, Vicky and I met, and we've been all over the place. We've been in two protests, and we've met in the last 24 hours. No, we've met in the last four months. We've been in protests to stop fracking at a Holiday Inn in Lakewood. We've been in a protest, we've been in several protests in Philadelphia. That man is an activist. Woo! And the Bernie Kratz, when I travel around the state following me, Goodman, and she says, am I stalking you? And I go, uh-huh. And she says, why are you here at all the speeches? I'm like, these people are on fire. And you are the infrastructure. And that infrastructure knows how to get out the vote because you've just Woo! been getting out the vote. Because Bernie beat Hillary by 12 points Woo! in Colorado. So let me take it down to a personal level. I am not in this race because I want to become a county commissioner or I want to become an elected official. I want to be in this race because of my moral conscience. When I shake the hand of Barack Obama, which I have, Bill Clinton, Gerald Ford, dozens of U.S. Senators, I've been at Michael Eisner's house in Aspen with Dianne Feinstein and Pelosi, Months after we invaded Iraq and said, what happens if we don't find weapons of mass destruction? And she said, well, we haven't figured it out yet and we have to have time. And the woman sitting next to me said, it's almost as big of a place as California. Republicans tried to recall me in my first few months as a county commissioner at, after 9-11 because I would not take an aggressive stand towards the Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. I was called unpatriotic and I was called a pacifist. Here we are 15 years later, and in July of 2014, President Obama took us back into Iraq. He said we were going to defend an embassy. Then it was a mountaintop of villagers. Then it was a dam. And now we've been there and we have some 15,000 troops, not counting our contracted troops. And he, the man who's won a Nobel Peace Prize, is bombing seven countries, lying about drone attacks, saying we've only attacked, we've only killed 169 innocent people. Do you know how many missiles we've dropped on Iraq and the ISIS? over 25,000 missiles, all right? So I am not going to sit back with Maya and Mateo going into fourth and sixth grade. So when they get older, say, where were you in a historic election, a historic time called 2016, when that perpetual war is going on for another 30 years, 
as the CIA director said it would be going on. I will not stand before you or anybody and not speak out about us being the largest exporter of terrorism in the world and killing innocent people. <laughs> When we are supporting Turkey, a NATO member who is run by a dictator, Ergenon, who is now bombing people and bringing his troops in and killing Syrian people. Yesterday, 20 people were killed. This is a proxy war against ourselves. We're arming al Nusra in Syria and we're giving arms to Syria, uh, to Saudi Arabia, who's decimating Yemen and al Nusra is in Yemen with the Houthis. Can anyone keep track of this bullshit? Remember what, remember what he said, the man, the oracle, John Stewart. Right? When you see bullshit, call it out. That's what we're doing in the next 75 days, folks. We're trying to save lives, because if we, the word compassion comes from the Latin word compate, to suffer with others. So if you're Buddhist, if you're a born-again Catholic like me, if whatever you are, all religions have one common denominator, all spiritual beliefs have one common denominator, compassion, to suffer with others. And you have to have, we have to have leadership like what Jill gives is about courage. And courage comes from a French word, core, heart. So if we have heart, and we have integrity, and we have discipline, knowing what we know now, we have to fight for the people that we are killing and decimating in the Middle East in order for us to have a great America, a great society, and a great world. We have to sacrifice for others in order to live. Our representatives are sacrificing for the global corporate mafia. Ooh. And we're going to call them out. Yeah. And we're going to call them out. And we're going to call them out. Now here's something that I've learned in just the last few months. Leadership doesn't wait. Calling picks you. You are the leaders. You have the calling by virtue of you sitting in the seat. You have a responsibility to fight for others because you're hearing this message now. What I will do for you is continue to do direct action. When I, get a, when I got arrested in a Senate hearing with John Kerry and the Joint Chief of Staff and the Secretary of Defense, it was with Code Pink. It was to try to stop an endless war. I didn't know what was going to happen to me afterwards. It was actually way cool. Better than any snowboard sick run I've ever taken in my life. And I've taken a lot of sick snowboard runs. <laughs> Activism is the coolest story that's being kept a secret. Yeah! It's so unbelievably rad. It's sick. And the reason it's sick, cool, and rad is because we're giving up ourselves to fight for other people. And that's what leaders do. We're going to stand up and we're going to do three things. And I'm running out of time. We're going to do three things. Direct action, direct action, and I forgot the third thing. And the reason we're going to do this is because I'm making a promise everywhere I go that Jill Stein will not get arrested alone if she does not get into the debate. There are dozens if not hundreds and you can stand up if you want to get arrested with me so that she's not taken in alone for nine hours and handcuffed and nobody knows where she is like she did four years ago. So Jill is fighting for us and we're going to fight for Jill. Thank you. All right. So just to wrap this up, because I'm supposed to say what I think Coloradoans want, how many people want us to stop the TPP? 
front. How many people want to pass Amendment 69 and universal health care? How many people want to pass $12 an hour so we can take it to 15 and 25 where it should be? How many people want to ban fracking? How many people want to stand up and give a warm welcome to the next president of the United States, Jill Stein?